This video is an introduction to functions, especially looking at the definition of a function, reflection of a function about the x-axis and the y-axis, and inverses of functions, i.e. the reflection of a function about the line y equals x. For inverses, this graph only looks at linear graphs and parabolas. So if we look at the definition of a function, a graph is a function if and only if, for every x value, there is only one corresponding y value. This means that for every x value that the graph has, it cannot have more than one y value connected to it. If we look at this graph labeled number one, let's look at the point here. Here's an x value. It only has one y value. Therefore, it must be a function. Let's look at number two. Again, we can take an x value here. Only one y value. An x value here, only one y value. This must be a function as well. Now, if we look at the graph number three, here's an x value, but here's one y value and there's another y value here. That means that for every x value, there is more than one corresponding y value. So this can't be a function. And again, if we look at number four, we find the same thing. Here's an x value, two y values. It can't be a function. The way to look and find out if something is a function quickly is to use what is called the vertical line test. Now the vertical line tests involved using your ruler or anything that's a straight line, you can even just use your finger, and move it along the graph. If at any point the vertical line is touching the graph in more than one place, then the graph is not a function. So if we look at number one, as we move it along, it only touches at one place. The same for number two. But if we get to graph three, here, the vertical line is intersecting the graph at two places. So it can't be a function. And the same for number four. Now, when we look at functions or graphs in general, we can label them as either one-to-one, -one, many to one, one to many, or many to many. A one-to-one -one graph is when for every x value, there is only one y value. And for every y value, there is only one x value. For example, all linear graphs. Now, if we look at graph number two, this would be a many to one graph because for every x value, there's only one y value, making it the to one part. But for every y value, there could be more than one x value. For example, Let's look at this point. Now, if we looked at this line here, this, let's say this is the line y equals three. At y equals three, here's an x value. But at y equals three over here is another x value, which means that for every y value, there's more than one x value. Now, it's still a function because that a function only is only concerned with when there's only one y value for every x value. But instead of being a one-to-one -one function, this parabola is now a many-to-one function. If we looked at number three, for every x value, there are multiple y values, making it too many. But for every y value, there's only one x value. For example, let's say this is, again, y equals three. At y equals three, there's only one x value that ma matches y equals three. That's the one, two part. Now, if we looked at number four, for every x value, we've seen that there's multiple y values. But for every y value, there's also multiple x values. For example, let's say y equals one. Now at y equals one, there's an x value. But at y equals one, here's another x value, causing the many part. So if you're looking at a graph, and you can see that it's called one to many or many to many, then you know that it's not a function. If you found that the graph is a function, then it's up to you to determine if it's a one to one function or a many to one function. So just remember that if it ends as if, if it ends with to one, it's a function. Now let's move on to reflections about the x axis. When you're reflecting about the x axis, you always negative the y values. For example, 
Here's the graph of f of x is equal to minus x squared plus 4, a parabola. Now we want to reflect it about the x-axis. So for every y value, we must make it negative. For example, this is the final graph, that reflection. You can see it, but we want to look at the equation and work it out algebraically. So we see here that the graph of f has a y-intercept of 4. This is also the turning point of the graph. Now we can see that when we reflect it about the x-axis, the turning point and the y-intercept is going to become minus 4. That means that for every y-value, we make it negative. The 4 becomes minus 4. Now these points are y equals 0. Minus 0 is equal to 0. That's why they've stayed the same. When we're doing this algebraically, let's call the reflected graph G. We know that G of X is equal to minus Y, and the Y is F of X. So G of X is equal to minus F of X. Now F of X is equal to minus X squared plus four. So it would be minus, minus X squared plus four. And if we factorize in that minus, it would be, we get that G of X is equal to X squared minus four. That's the equation of this line, the reflection of this red line about the x-axis. Now, if we look at reflection about the y-axis, let's take the parabola here, x squared minus 4x minus 5. It's got x-intercepts at minus 1 and 5, a y-intercept of minus 5, and a turning point of 2 minus 9. Now we want to reflect it about the y-axis. That means that we must make every x value negative. So we can see here, we've drawn it by inspection, but we're also going to work it out algebraically. If we want to make every x value negative, let's take this. 5, we make it minus 5. Minus 1, minus minus 1 gives us 1. Minus 5, that's the y value. We've got an x value of 0. Minus 0 is 0. So this y-intercept of minus 5 doesn't change. Now, if we look at the turning point, we're only concerned with the x values. So we make the x value negative, 2 becomes negative 2, and the y value stays the same. We can do this algebraically by saying that our reflective graph, again, is g of x. But instead of going minus f of x, as we did when reflecting about the x-axis, we're now going to go f of minus x. So instead of negating the y values, we're now adding a negative to all the x values. So now if we had our f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5. Now we put in minus by every x. And remember that the negative sign goes inside the brackets and the whole negative x is squared. Again, and then we've got minus 4 times minus x minus 5. This minus 5 doesn't change because there's no x with it. And if we simplify this equation, we go minus x squared is just x squared because minus times a minus is a positive. Minus 4 times minus x goes to plus 4x and the minus 5 stays the same. This is your equation of your green graph, the reflection of the red graph about the y-axis. Lastly, we're going to look at inverses. Inverses are reflections of the graph about the line y equals x. This is the line y equals x. If we look at a linear graph, linear graphs are easy to do to find the inverse. In order to find the inverse, it's the same for every type of graph. All you do is you swap your x and y, which means that if we've got the red graph here, f, f is minus 2x plus 4, i.e. y is equal to minus 2x plus 4. Now we've got to swap our x and y. Since we had y is equal to minus 2x plus 4, for our inverse, we get x is equal to minus 2y plus 4. Now all we've got to do is simplify it so that we get y on its own, because when you've got a graph, you always write it as y equals. Now when we, we can just work with our equation, if you're struggling with this, just pause the video and look through this um, working out to find out how we got that y is equal to minus a half x plus 2. Now, when we're writing inverses, we always write them as, for example, f to the minus 1x. 
Now, don't get confused and think of, let's say, 2 to the minus 1. We know that 2 to the minus 1 is equal to a half. That's 2 to the power of minus 1. This is a different concept. This is merely notation. If, you, if this graph was called h of x, then we'd write it as h to the minus 1 of x. It doesn't mean 1 over f of x. Now, if we looked at parabolas. Parabolas are a bit trickier simply because of the definition of a function coming into play and how we work out our inverse. So we've got this parabola, the red parabola, 2x squared plus 2x minus 12. Now we want to find the inverse. So we swap the x and y values. x is equal to 2y squared plus 2y minus 12. Now when we're trying to get y on its own, we have to complete the square. So you take all the non-y terms to the other side. So you've got 2y squared plus 2y is equal to x plus 12. When you're working with parabolas, you always have to complete the square if you've got a y squared term and a y term. So now we know that for completing the square, the y squared term always has to have a coefficient of 1. So we divide each side by 2. Simple. We get y squared plus y is equal to x over 2 plus 6. Now we want to find our magic number. The magic number is the coefficient of the y term, which is in this case 1, divided by 2, so a half squared. A half squared is a quarter. And then we add this magic number to each side. So we get y squared plus y plus a quarter is equal to a half x plus 6 plus a quarter. Now we can rewrite y squared plus y plus a quarter as a y plus half squared. Keep the other side the same. All we did here was go 6 plus a quarter is equal to 25 over 4. Now that we have y plus a half squared, we can square root it and just get y plus a half. But again, we have to do that to the other side. And remember that when we square root in, we always go plus minus. So now we've got y plus a half is equal to plus minus root half x plus 25 over 4. And now all we do is take our minus half to the other side. And then we rewrite y equals as f to the minus 1 equals. Now we must remember to restrict our x values, i.e. restrict our domain, because this term under the square root must always be greater than or equal to 0, because we know that the square root of negative numbers do not exist, are not real numbers. So we know that x must be greater than or equal to minus 25 over 2. All you do to, to get that is go x over 2 plus 25 over 4 equals 0. Solve for x. x must be greater than or equal to this value. And we can see this when drawing the graph. We can see that we've drawn the inverse now. Of course, x is greater than or equal to minus 25 over 2. Now, one point that must be noted is that when you're drawing inverses, the inverse of the graph and the graph always intersect on the line y equals x. For example, if we look at our linear graph, they intersect on the line y equals x. You can get this point by equating f of x and f to the minus 1. So minus 2x plus 4 is equal to minus a half x plus 2. Or to make it easier, you can simply equate the line y equals x with either one of these graphs. So make minus 2x plus 4 equal to x, or minus half x plus 2 equal to x, and solve for x. When we look at our parabola, we also want it to intersect on the line y equals x. Y in this case is all the intersections, is not all the intersections on the line y equals x. So we'll get to that. For now, what we've got to focus on is the fact that this graph, the inverse of the parabola, is not a function. We can see that. We can do our vertical line test and see that, for example, at this random x value, there's a y value, there's a y value. So it can't be a function. What we've got to do to fix that is restrict the domain of the original function. So we either, we look at the turning point, and we can either go to the right of the turning point or to the left of the turning point. If we choose to go to the right of the turning point, i.e. x is greater than or equal to minus a half, we can see we've got the right arm of our function x. Because of this, when we draw our parabola, we only have the positive, we get minus a half plus root x over 2 plus 25 over 4. So that negative doesn't 
isn't involved in this equation. So the, and we get once we, when we're drawing the right arm of the parabola, we get the top arm of the inverse function. And we can see now that if we drew the line y equals x, they would intersect on that line. If we wanted to restrict the function to the left arm of the parabola, we could do that by making x less than or equal to minus a half. That would give us the bottom arm of the inverse function. And in that case, the equation would be minus a half minus root x over 2 plus 25 over 4. Our domain will always stay the same because no matter what, we can see that x is only greater than or equal to minus 25 over 2. So that's a quick introduction to functions, to inverses and reflections. If you have any questions, just let us know and we'll do some more videos in the future.